Hey guys, I'm finally back with another video and I'm pretty much picking up where I left off where I'm pretty much trying to redo all my Godot 3 tutorials to Godot 4 and in this video we're going to be doing that for our POS menu. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So as always, I already have a very basic scene here set up and in this case it's a 3D scene and if I actually go ahead and run the scene and let's full screen it, you will see that it's just a very simple scene, like I said, with some moving platforms. Now, what we're going to be doing in this video is, if I click on my escape key, you will notice that a pause menu shows up and actually pauses the game. So this is what we're going to be doing. So, let's go ahead and quit. And let's actually try and recreate that. And as you can see, I already have the pause menu created in this project. So I'm just going to create a new one by clicking on this plus icon, which is the add new scene icon. And then as the root node of this, I want to go ahead and add a user interface, which is just a control node. Let's go ahead and rename it immediately to paused menu two, since again, I already have a pause menu. So this is going to be our pause menu two. As a child of the pause menu two, I'm going to use a color rect and then I'm going to do full rect after clicking on this green icon, uh, do full rect. And then over in the inspector for the color, we can click on it and then we can pretty much click and drag these different fields here to have the color we want. But in this case, I already have a color saved under swatches. So I'm just going to reuse that color. So I'm going to select that. Then with the pause menu two selected, I'm going to add a grid container. And then this grid container, I'm going to click on the green icon again. And I want it to be anchored at the center. So that looks fine. Then with the grid container still selected, I'm going to do control A which I don't think I actually mentioned, but it's basically the shortcut to bring up the create new node menu, which has pretty much where we can select our nodes from. But if you didn't know that shortcut, the, the shortcut is control A. And then I want to add a uh, label as a child of my grid container. And we're going to change the text property in the inspector to say uh, let's just have it say pause, keep it simple. And while we're at it, we're going to scroll down to theme overrides and then font sizes and then change the font size here to something bigger. So something like 32 should be fine. Now, I definitely wouldn't recommend doing it this way for your actual games instead of using theme overrides on each uh, you know, UI nodes, such as like labels. Instead, I would choose the main node, which in this case is our control node, and then do theme, and then click on empty new theme, and then define all the styling on this new theme that you create. That would be the actual proper way of doing things, but to, you know, keep things simple and fast for this video, I'm just gonna do it the theme override way in the inspector. So that's just something I wanted to basically make note of. But let's actually continue. With the grid container selected, let's go ahead and add some buttons here. So this is going to be our first button and this is going to be our resume game button. So let's go ahead and actually rename it to resume button. Well, <laughs> let's make sure we add BTN so the way we know it's the button. And then we can do control D to duplicate it. And let's do it one more time to have two more buttons. Select the second one. And this is going to be our settings uh, button. And then in the inspector, let's change the text to say settings. And then for the third one, let's be, let's change it to quit button. And then text, let's change it to just say quit. Looks good. Now I want some more spacing uh, between the buttons so I can select the grid container. Go over to the inspector, theme overrides, constraints, and then for V separation, I can give it a number. So in this case, it's just to eight, uh, eight pixels. So as you can see, it gives it some more uh, space between each button. And 
so forth. All, all the children of the grid container, essentially. Now, uh, I do also want to note that uh, you, you definitely don't have to follow the same structure for your pause menu um, like I am doing here. I'm just keeping things very simple and doing it this way, but your layout for your pause menu can totally be way different than mine. It doesn't really matter. Now, uh, I think that actually does it for our simple layout here so we can actually proceed to add our script so with the pause menu 2 selected let's attach a new script by clicking on this script button up here and let's actually rename the script to use snake case so pause menu under with you know lowercase and the underscore and let's just save it in our, in our main file system folder uh, click create and there we go our script is created and let's actually get started by defining a variable that's going to be keeping track of whether the game is actually paused or not. And this is actually going to be a setter uh, variable, essentially. So we're going to be making use of a setter function. And to do that in Godot 4, we want to do var underscore, uh, so I'm going to name it underscore is paused. And then I'm going to actually define the uh, explicitly tell it what type of variable this is supposed to be so it's going to be a bull a boolean variable and by default it's going to be set to false and to actually make use of a setter in godot 4 we want to put the colon right here and then make sure that we have the proper indentation and then we want to do set is equal to set paused so here we're basically telling it to use a uh, our setter function, which we're gonna define now. So func set paused, and then parentheses it's gonna take in a value, which is gonna be of type bool, and we're gonna return nothing, so we can do void, and then inside this function we wanna do is paused. Is equal to the value we're getting and then to actually pause the game we want to do git tree and then dot paused which is a property that we actually have access to under git tree which handles pausing our game and to do it or to actually be able to pause the game we just want to define this property to either true or false and we're going to make use of our variable we defined at the top to do just that so get tree dot is equal to is our is pause variable which this line will actually pause our game depending on what our variable what the value of our variable up here is if it's true or false now we also want to basically be able to toggle the visibility of our pause menu and to do that we want to access the visible property and we want to set this to a boolean value and it's going to be again our is pause variable. So this line of code here will basically toggle the visibility of our pause menu. Now to actually be able to pause the menu we need to be able to click on a key on our keyboard to toggle the action essentially and to do that we're going to make use of our function unhandled input method or function whatever you want to call it and then we want to use an if statement so if event that is action pressed and then it's going to mean to be our pause action, which is a action I created under project, project settings, input map. And as you can see here, I defined a pause action, which you can do by giving it, giving it, giving it a uh, name, if I can actually speak. And then pressing this little plus icon and then pressing the keyboard key that you want to use. Godot will automatically detect which key you're pressing and then click OK. But since I already have my action defined here, I'm not going to do that. So if our action is pressed and that action is paused, 
we want to set our is pause variable equal to not is paused. So we're setting our is pause variable to the opposite of what the current value of our is pause variable is. So since by default it's set to false, by doing this here it's going to set it to true. So essentially this line of code is what toggles be our is pause variable uh, from being true false. So each time we press our pause action, it's going to set our variable to the opposite. So since it's currently false, it's going to set it to true. If we press it again, it's going to set it to false and so forth. So this is what toggles our menu essentially. And before in Godot 3, I believe you actually had to do self dot is paused and you would have to do self here in order to make use of our setter function. If you didn't have self, then it wouldn't actually trigger our setter function here. And I believe in Godot 4, you don't actually need to use self anymore. Uh, but do correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I don't believe you need to use it anymore. And yeah, that if we can actually already test this out but before we do that let's actually connect our buttons so let's select our resume button and then let's connect a signal to it so instead of inspector we want to go into the node tab and then click on the press signal and then simply with the pause menu selected click on connect and there we go we connected our press signal for the resume button and now we just want to repeat that for the other two buttons so settings press connect quit button pressed connect so now we have these functions that we can use for when our buttons are pressed and for the resume button we basically just want to set our is pause variable equal to false that way our game's no longer paused our settings button for now we're just going to leave it to pass uh, since we don't actually have a settings menu and then for our quit, we can do git underscore tree. And then we actually have a method on our git tree, which is called quit, which does just that it quits our game. So with this, that should be all the code we actually need to make this work. So let's actually test this out by going to my main scene or actually let's save this before we forget. So pause menu two. So let's save our scene. Let's just save it in our main folder. Now, since it's safe, we can go back to our main node or our main scene and let's delete our existing pause menu that we have. And let's do, and you do want to make sure that you actually add a canvas layer uh, node to your game and then as a child of the canvas layer, then you want to add your pause menu. And I'm using the shortcut Control Shift A to bring up our instantiate child scene menu, and then we can select our pause menu too. Oh, and by default, we want to set it to hidden. So let's go back to our pause menu scene and have it by default to hidden, and that's saved. So now it should be, you know, hidden by default. It just looks like it is. And now if we run our game here, it should actually work. So let's do escape and it's actually not working. And I'm pretty sure I know why. And that's because we forgot to set the uh, process for the, the pause menu. So with the pause menu to select it, or basically your root node of your pause menu, we want to go over to process in the inspector. And then for the mode, instead of inherit, we want to set it to always. And let's go ahead and save. Let's go back to our main scene here. And let's run the scene. Full screen it and press our pause action. And as you can see here, it is actually now working. So that's pretty much it. That's all you actually need to make a pause menu in Godot 4. Now, I, I'm not sure if I did uh, mention, I believe I might have mentioned or might have not, I already forgot, but basically if I go into my pause menu too, there is another way we can actually set our setter function instead of doing it this way. Uh, let me actually show you the other way we can do it. This way was just basically the closest way or the most similar way uh, to Godot 3. 
but like I said there is another way of doing it so let's just comment out our setter function here so instead of having our setter function separate and then having from our variable we can actually kind of have it grouped together so instead we can do var underscore is paused like so now I give it the type it is so boolean and then by default it's false colon and then we can do set parentheses and then it's going to take in a value colon and then we pretty much use the same exact code that we had in the separate uh, setter function that we had down here so let's just copy that and paste it here and let's make sure that it's not commented out and we have the proper indentation otherwise it won't actually work so let's indent it how it should be okay there we go so as you can see that eliminates the errors and yeah this should actually work as well and this is basically just another way of defining a setter in Godot 4 so you can pretty much use whichever way you prefer it's up to your personal preference but let's actually just test this out to show you that it does work so full screen it and let's do it again as you can see it is working so there you go that's another way you can use a setter in Godot 4 and also that fully completes your pause menu so yeah that pretty much does it for this video so if you found this video helpful make sure you leave a like and consider subscribing and i'll see you guys in the next one until then have a wonderful day